Hello students, welcome to lecture 20 of the online course on photonic crystals, fundamentals and applications. Today's lecture will be on point defects in periodic dielectric waveguides and the quality factors of the lossy cavities. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a discussion on the symmetry and polarization, then we will discuss about the point defects in periodic dielectric waveguides and how to calculate the quality factors of lossy cavities. So let us focus on the first topic of the day that is symmetry and polarization. So if you think about the distinction between polarization in two dimensional structures okay, that we discussed in lecture 13, okay, we, we could see that the band structure looks different when you uh, choose TM or TE polarization, is not it? So, it is common for these uh, two dimensional structures to exhibit a photonic uh, band gap for modes of one polarization and not for the other, right. So, usually they may have a different band gap and you basically try to overlap those band gaps to maximize your complete band gap. So, when you talk about complete band gap, we want the band gap to be for all the directions that all that means all the values of k okay, in the irreducible brilliance zone and also for both the polarizations. right? And when you talk about polarization in three dimensional structures, so you can see that in three dimensional structures, the electromagnetic modes cannot generally be divided into two distinct polarizations because of their complexity and the orientation of the field, right. So, you will typically call them like T like or T m like modes, okay. So, you can actually think of you know the special cases where mirror symmetry can be applied. So, these are applicable for you know thin structures that possess mirror symmetry and in that case the fields are often you know characterized by specific polarization and this concept will be explored further in this lecture. So, here you can see the electric fields um, profile of a mode. So, the figure on the right okay, it shows the schematic depiction of electric field lines which are the E field okay, for a thin dielectric structure that is shown in this uh, gray shading okay, and uh, it is considering z equal to 0 as a mirror symmetry plane. So, this is your z axis, this is your y axis, so this is z equal 0 axis okay, or z equal to 0 plane. So, the modes that are even with respect to this mirror plane, okay, so they are considered to be TE like. Okay. So, as you can see that uh, the electric field is mostly parallel to the mirror plane okay. and they are exactly parallel in the case when uh, it is z equals 0. Okay. And uh, for the odd modes which are shown here, so these are like even modes or like T like modes. Okay. You can also think of the odd modes which are more like T m. So, there the electric field is almost perpendicular to this uh, mirror symmetry plane that is z equals 0, okay. but then it is exactly perpendicular at z equals 0, is not it. So, that is how you can see that you can uh, you know uh, differentiate the mode profiles into even which is T like or odd modes which is T m like. Okay. So, what we observed here that away from the mirror plane, the fields tend to maintain their you know T m and T e like characteristics and uh, this tendency hold holds as long as you know uh, the waveguide thickness remains smaller than the wavelength of the light. Now, we can further classify you know uh, the most polarized state. So, we have seen that you know most T like states are those uh, which are even with respect to Z symmetry okay, or Z equals 0 plane and uh, odd with respect to uh, Y okay, that is like you know Y equals 0. Hmm. So, those can be uh, called as E 
odd n kind of states. Conversely, you can think of the other other possibility where you have you know uh, TM like states. So these are basically uh, those which are even with respect to both uh, Z and Y. So you can actually uh, call them as uh, M E N. Okay. So what is N? N is basically telling you the band number, right? So let us consider two um, T like modes. So when I say T like modes, we'll be talking about capital E, okay? And then they are odd with respect to y equals zero, okay? That is why uh, you are having this uh, odd representation O, okay? And then one and two are basically your numbers, okay? So what we see here, given their T like nature, it is basically appropriate to focus only on the H jet component that is basically the jet component of the magnetic field, okay, as this is the only H field component that will be present on Z equal 0 plane, okay. So, Z equal 0 plane you can see from here you are basically considering uh, the X Y plane, right. So, in this particular figure you can consider uh, E O 1 and E O 2 which are basically these two uh, um, states right and uh, th they both are uh, T like and that is why we choose to plot uh, you know uh, a Z as you can see here ok and if you look into this band diagram which you have seen in the previous lecture we can also see that uh, the first band which is the lower edge of the gap okay and uh, the second one is basically the upper edge of the band gap right so that marks your one and two okay and uh, when you see the field plots you can actually see that you know the lower uh, energy one or the lower frequency one is basically having the fields concentrated um, on the air holes okay and uh, for the higher energy the uh, field is mostly concentrated in the dielectric between the air holes right and for easy understanding you can see that uh, the dielectric material is basically marked with uh, this translucent yellow shading so this is some, something very similar to what we have seen in the previous lecture okay so what what is important here is to understand the relationship between the symmetry and the polarization okay so focus on the symmetry of the edged plan so the edged plot that you see here so red tells you about positive magnetic field okay and uh, blue is the negative one okay so edged plot appears to uh, exhibit even symmetry with respect to y equals 0 okay and uh, uh, that is like you know uh, with respect to this hmm. and uh, odd symmetry with respect to z equals 0 fine. So, uh, if you consider the subtlety of this symmetry and the field nature you will see that despite appearances there is no actual difference in symmetry. The subtlety lies uh, in the nature of H as a pseudo vector which incurs an additional factor of minus 1 under mirror reflection. So, sometimes you know in reflection you will see that you know there is an additional factor of minus 1. So, your uh, field lines actually get you know uh, reversed. So, positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive and so on. So, typically when uh, discussions simplify this kind of simplicity by focusing solely on the symmetry of the E field, okay, avoiding the subtlety that is associated with the H field, okay. So, that is why sometimes you need to, you know, you, you should uh, try to focus on electric field and magnetic field distribution both. Sometimes one helps in understanding or explaining a particular feature more than the other right 
and we have understood that if you are able to compute one field that is E field, H field is also related. So, it is also possible to get the magnetic field information as well. Now, what are the advantages of dual mirror uh, symmetries in waveguide? So, having uh, two different mirror symmetries in a waveguide is beneficial because it allows a TETM like band gap to persist even if one uh, symmetry is disrupted. Okay? So, we, we have seen this particular uh, thing and if you remember that this was considered for an array of uh, cylindrical holes in a slab of finite thickness, but this was considered to be in air. Okay. Now, as soon as you cannot make a waveguide that is in air, right, in practice. So, when you try to make this uh, waveguide on a low index uh, substrate, okay, so uh, you do not want to keep it in, you know, floating in air because that is not feasible. So, when you put it on top of a substrate, what will happen, you know, it breaks the z equals 0 mirror symmetry. So, one symmetry is kind of lost. So, only you have the y symmetry. Okay. So, despite the loss of z symmetry, you will see that the y symmetry remains intact and what would be the effect of that on the band gaps? Because of the preservation of the y symmetry, you can ensure that the large gap between the y odd modes, okay, which is depicted in the band diagram, they still continue to exist. So, this is what will happen when you do the simulation by placing this particular waveguide on a substrate. You will see that although you have compromised on the z symmetries or z mirror symmetry, you can still get this uh, band gap with, you know, y symmetry being preserved. Make sense? So, let us further look into, um, uh, like if you take some specific examples, something like, you know, what is, uh, okay, we will come to that later. Now, first we need to uh, also analyze that what is the importance of the dielectric constant difference. So, remember that it is crucial for the substrate to have much smaller dielectric constant than the waveguide itself. Okay? So, that will ensure that the waveguide modes and the band gap remain well below the light cone. So, what is the problem if it goes uh, or close to the light cone? The guided modes will start you know, leaking out. So, you do not want that. So, you want your uh, substrate to have a much lower or smaller dielectric constant as compared to the material that you have used to make your waveguide. So, what are the common material pairing? So, if you think of common material pair pairing that is done at infrared wavelengths that also catered to your uh, telecom wavelength of 1550 nanometer. Right. So, typically it is silicon on insulator or silica. So, it is silicon on silica platform. Okay. So, SOI platform. So, silica, what is the uh, dielectric constant? It is typically 2. Silicon, it is typically 12. So, you can see the amount of contrast present. Right. So, what is the role of the substrate here? The substrate basically lowers the frequency of both light cone and the guided modes and you know that happens because the modes slightly penetrate into the substrate. So, what are the additional effects of the substrate? The substrate also influences point effects and we will take this discussion in more details in the next section. Okay? So, what you understood from this discussion on symmetry and polarization? So, we understood that for thin structures with mirror symmetry such as those shown in this figure which are the examples of periodic dielectric waveguides, okay, which uh, combine one dimensional periodicity in x and typically they have uh, index guiding helping them in the two other orthogonal directions. Right. So, the modes in this kind of waveguides can be classified as TE like or TM like. Okay? Then in two dimension, the favorable geometry for TM band gaps as we have seen are basically the dielectric spots in air and uh, sorry, dielectric spots like this. Okay? And uh, for TE, 
it was basically air holes in dielectric so this this kind of structure basically gives you a t band gap and this kind of structure that is uh, dielectric spots in air typically give you tm band gap right so you can actually try to combine this structure as we have seen earlier to get both t and tm um, band gap overlapped and you can get complete band gap for the structure that you want to make right so here you can see that structure a and uh, c okay they basically uh, favor t like gaps and the one in the middle this one it it favors uh, tm like gaps let us now move on to the next topic which is point defects in uh, periodic dielectric waveguides we'll analyze this in more uh, details so one respect in which periodic dielectric waveguides differ from the systems considered in the previous lectures is that the defect states are not perfectly localized okay so periodic dielectric waveguides uh, in in those if you want to um, create point defects so what are the methods so the various methods exist okay and uh, one easy way if you consider the structure in this uh, case a would be to alter the radius of the hole within uh, the waveguide structure or another way would be to you know alter the spacing so here the holes are spaced at a distance a that is the latest spacing from each other so if you change one pair of holes okay not following that so instead of a if you change it to 1.4 a okay by adding some extra dielectric material that also gives rise to defect okay so this you can do so you can actually increase the hole spacing and because of that what will happen you know it pulls down a mode from the upper eo2 band into the band gap okay and that is how it creates a defect state so you can actually look that in in simulation okay and uh, here this shows uh, z equals 0 plane this is y equals 0 plane okay or uh, this actually tells you that this particular one is the one where you know the defect is created okay so what is the state of this uh, waveguide it is basically suspended in air so we, we take the simplified structure for simulation purpose so only difference here is that the spacing between one pair of holes have been increased from a to 1.4 a so because of that strong localization okay um, and exponential decay of field can be seen inside uh, the waveguide okay and uh, you can also see here that the field decays only inversely with distance in the lateral dimensions so they quickly you know diminishes okay and uh, if you look from x equals 0 plane okay you will be able to see that you know exactly at that particular point defect um, the field is trying to you know leak out through radiative leakage okay and uh, this saturated color scheme has been used here to exaggerate the small field values for better visualization okay so the resulting defect state is basically a te type and its frequency is uh, basically shown in the left panel okay of figure 6 that you can see here okay and uh, the frequency of this uh, defect state is basically um, omega naught which is 0 0.308 times 2 pi c by a okay so you can find out the exact frequency if you know what is the lattice spacing now unlike the defect states in the previous chapter here uh, you can see that the band gap is uh, incomplete that means you know light cone modes uh, exist 
for any frequency okay so the band gap is only for a specific uh, range isn't it you can go back and quickly have a look at the band diagram so that we are referring to here yeah so you can see the light cone modes basically exist for all frequencies and the this is only for certain uh, you know frequency and also for a specific direction this part works right and you basically have uh, pulled down this mode okay so this is the mode which is above the band gap but something has been pulled down and within the gap you have localized that particular mode into the defect state okay so what is the nature of the defect state the defect state is basically a leaky mode or a resonance due to incomplete band gap and it forms a resonant cavity at the point you know of defect so introduction of the defect basically breaks the translational symmetry and that would lead to non conservation of the wave vector k so if you have a closer look okay at the defect you can understand that you know the main loss here is the radiative loss right so the defect mode can couple with the light mode that share the same frequency omega yeah because it has there are uh, light modes uh, existing at those uh, frequencies so that way they can you know leak out easily through radiation so that is the intrinsic radiative loss now you can visualize this you know outward radiating wave by using this kind of color scheme which is a saturated color scheme which are used to you know emphasize small amplitude waves which are leaking out from this uh, defect so the main advantage disadvantage of uh, the incomplete band gap system is that you know the intrinsic radiative loss of point defect remains as a significant drawback here as as compared to complete photonic band gap in complete photonic band gap what happens for those bands no um, you know light modes exist that means you know there wouldn't be any uh, radiative loss but here there are radiative losses okay so there are challenges presented by this radiative loss something like you know the first thing is the quantification of the loss so it is very important to accurately measure the extent of loss and that needs to be elaborated and also the tolerance assessment for application so that means you know how do you determine that how much loss can be tolerated for some specific application okay and that is very important and we will go into the details of that towards the end of this course okay so right now we just uh, keep this in mind that you know tolerance assessment for point defects okay in this kind of periodic uh, dielectric wave guides which are popularly used is very important okay so now let us focus on the next subtopic which is quality factors of lossy cavities so the nature of mode in a resonant cavity okay is basically the one it, it's kind of trapped inside the cavity but it decays slowly okay so because it decays you can think of a mode which has got a complex frequency so you can use this kind of complex frequency description for the mode that is within a cavity and you can consider omega c okay to be written as omega naught minus i gamma by 2 where omega naught represents the real part of the frequency indicating that that is the actual uh, oscillation frequency and uh, the other part that is minus uh, i gamma by 2 okay is the imaginary part and that corresponds to the rate of exponential decay of the mode okay so you actually can cover for both the factors now the decay of the field and energy okay can be estimated okay so you can think that the field within the cavity decays according to e to the power minus gamma t by 2 leading to the energy within the cavity to decay as you know field 
is decaying like this so the energy will be the, like square of it so it, it is minus gamma t right so how do you characterize the loss rate so the loss rate can be characterized by gamma the scale variance of maxwell's equation makes the dimensionless quantity q which is defined as omega naught by gamma to be more suitable for characterization of loss rate now this q is a very interesting parameter it's called the quality factor of the lossy cavities so q the quality factor is a very important concept when you discuss resonance isn't it firstly you know 1 by q serves as a dimensionless uh, decay rate so mathematically it can be expressed as 1 by q equals p over omega naught u so what is p p is the power lost and uh, u is the stored energy secondly q is also a dimensionless lifetime that means the number of optical period that elapses before the energy decays by to the power minus 2 pi that factor and third that 1 by q is basically the fractional bandwidth of the resonance so you can see the quality factor q can actually convey a lot of information right now the fourier transform of uh, the time varying field that is without within the cavity okay features a squared amplitude that follows a lorentzian distribution which can be written using this formula 1 over omega minus omega naught square plus omega naught over 2 q whole square so what is the role of uh, q factor in lorentzian peak the fractional bandwidth of lorentzian peak at its um, half maximum is basically represented by 1 by q it indicates that the quality factor has got influence on the peak's sharpness so here there is an example of gaussian so this is the gaussian one and this is the lorentzian one okay so there is a difference between the two distribution okay and uh, q is fundamental in uh, the coupled mode theory which will also be explored in more details towards the end of the course okay in say lecture number 31 to 36 okay so if a resonance has a multiple decay mechanism uh, how do you actually analyze the or how do you characterize each mechanism with its own quality factor q so uh, take an example of a point defect cavity in air bridge waveguide so when i say air bridge waveguide it is basically that periodic dielectric waveguide in air okay so the net q of the resonant mode in that air bridge uh, waveguide varies with the number n of holes on either side of the cavity that is clear right one one particular hole is the point defect and on either side of the cavity you will have more number of holes so with the number of holes the quality factor actually increases okay as you can see here now what is interesting is that q does increase okay and it also saturates so in photonic crystals with a complete gap q typically increase exponentially with n however in this particular case because it's not a photonic crystal with perfect uh, complete uh, gap in this case q increases with n but when n becomes large it tends to saturate okay so this particular one shows uh, the q factor of the point defect state from this particular figure okay we have discussed before as a function of n that is the number of holes on either side of the defect so there are three cases being considered one is air bridge that means uh, the waveguide is basically in air you have monorail kind of arrangement where uh, this this substrate basically uh, mirrors the cross section of the waveguide including the holes which are also shown here as vertical lines and this is the another case of solid substrate okay 
okay so this this one tells you the substrate is large and it is not having any uh, holes on it so the quality factor actually degrades for this kind of substrate support and for solid substrate it is this way below what we expected from the air bridge okay and this happens because the mode in this cavity can basically decay through two primary mechanism okay so first is it can decay into uniform dielectric strip on either side of the hole okay or it can radiate into the surrounding air right so how do you estimate the net dimensionless decay rate you can consider the net dimensionless decay rate as 1 by q and you can express it as a sum of uh, the waveguide decay rate that is 1 over qw and the radiative decay rate that can be written as 1 over qr so 1 over q is basically 1 over qw plus 1 plus 1 over qr okay so what are what is the behavior of this individual q values so when the q values are large they can generally be treated as independent okay so you can see that qw increases exponentially with n due to the band gap effect so qw is basically the decay uh, into the waveguide okay and qr remains uh, roughly constant regardless of n so coming back to this figure where you start seeing uh, saturation with increase in the number of holes okay so this is happen happening because you know uh, q w increases while q r is remaining constant okay so the rate actually slows down so when n approaches infinity q actually converges to q r okay and uh, that is uh, typically 1200 in this particular example okay so that is where the q value gets saturated so what would be the radiative power or radiated power in this kind of device so the radiated power is basically loss okay so in many device application the radiated power is considered as a loss and you have to minimize this loss okay so it is generally preferred for uh, qr which is the radiative quality factor okay to be greater than uh, qw which is the waveguide uh, quality factor okay because if qr if you if you remember this formula okay so you can actually think of the decay rate okay so if this is large as uh, discussed here okay so it is generally preferred that you know qr to be larger than that of uh, qw right so here you can also see the effect of substrate that the black and the red lines will show you how quality factor varies with n that is the number of holes on either side of the cavity and only thing that is changing here is the two substrate so one is a identical substrate of the pattern that you have made here that is called a monorail substrate and the other one is a solid substrate so in both cases what uh, the material has been used is same so the waveguide is made of uh, material which is a dielectric constant of 12 but the substrate in both case have uh, permittivity of 2.25 okay so only difference is that, that this this thing is a monorail substrate which basically mirrors the cross section of the waveguide itself so the substrate also has a hole drilled in it okay however this is a you know, solid substrate without any holes so in both um, substrate scenarios the band gap is maintained due to the preservation of y equals 0 mirror plane and that supports the symmetry and the polarization properties that you have discussed today in the lecture and the last thing is that what is the impact of substrate on radiative lifetime that is qr so you can see that uh, you know the substrate blocks one part 
okay, it breaks the z equals 0 plane symmetry. So, the presence of substrate tends to decrease the radiative quality factor that is qr and this corresponds to a reduction in the radiative lifetime. So, the localized mode that you see in the crystal can be approximated by a decaying exponential multiplied by an e to the power i pi x by a oscillation as we have understood and learned from the earlier discussions on the evanescent modes uh, in photonic band gap. So, finally, we can conclude by comparing the two substrate is that the monorail type of substrate which consists mainly of air has a weaker effect on the light cone as compared to the solid substrate. So, with this you can actually get the features very close to the air bridge kind of structure that you have used for your simulation for simplification. Okay? So, monorail substrate basically reduces the QR okay, by approximately 30 percent that is also quite. So, from 1200 it will come down to say uh, 900 or something. Okay? But if you use the solid substrate like this, okay, QR the quality factor radiative quality factor uh, comes down by almost by a factor of 10. That means, you have significant you know impact on the radiative loss because of this solid substrate. Okay? So, thank you all. So, that will be all for this particular lecture on point effect in uh, periodic dielectric waveguides and analysis of quality factors for lossy cavities. So, if you have any query uh, on this particular lecture, you can always drop an email to this particular email address dev.shikdar at itj.ac.in. But do not forget to mention MOOC and photonic crystals and also pause if possible this lecture number on the subject line. Thank you. Mm -hmm.